In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create either a 3D floor plan or a 3D section in Revit. Now, in the first part of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create this sort of a general angled look at the building or the 3D model, and then we're going to be cutting it to show off either the floor plan or a section. Now, this will be shown both as a orthographic view, so all parallel lines in real life will be shown parallel in these views, and then also as perspective views. Moving forward, we will also cover how to create these head-on views, both at floor plans and at sections, and these will be only perspective views. Now, this is going to be the 3D model of a house that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. Okay, so in order to represent a 3D floor plan or a 3D section, what we need to do is we need to create a section box for this view. So in order to create a section box for a view, what you need to do is navigate here to the properties panel, scroll down a little bit until you find the extents uh, option. Now here under extents, the final option will be a section box. Now once you check a section box, it will create this, well, a box around your model. Now this box is going to have drag points on either side, and by moving these drag points, you can cut up your model. Now you can cut it like this in the 3D view that you're using, or if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can navigate to one of the elevations, for example, in order to set it up. So for example, I just need to select this 3D section box, go here to the project browser, scroll down a little bit and find elevations, open up one of those, and then here I have the control and I can set it up at the exact height where I want it. Once I'm done with that, I can just go back here to the 3D view and there we go. Now it's just a matter of orbiting around until you get the perfect angle. Now for creating a 3D section, it's quite similar. What we need to do is just readjust this 3D section box. So just make sure to select it. Let's go to this top slider or control bar, move it up a little bit until we are no longer cutting the house from the top. Next, we can just move over to one of the sides and drag that over until it's cutting the house. Again, if you want to align it perhaps to an existing section, what you can do is just navigate to, for example, a floor plan. So that's what I'm going to do. Just go here to the project browser, scroll up a little bit. Here we have floor plans. Let's go to level one. And then here I have an existing section. So what I'm going to do is just select this 3D section box and move it over until it aligns with our existing section line. Now I can just go back to the 3D view over here and now we have that 3D section. Now, of course, it's just a matter of uh, orbiting around a little bit until we get our perfect angle. At this point, if you would like to save the view, what you can do is just go to the project browser, scroll down, and as you can see, the active view is the default 3D view, so that's what we have been using so far. Now, you can just duplicate this by right-clicking on it, going to duplicate view, and just clicking on duplicate. At this point, you can just right-click on the new view, go into rename and let's just call this one a 3D section. At this point you can go back to the original 3D view, the default 3D view, and here we can just turn off the section box inside of the properties panel. This will return us to the original 3D view. Now let's make everything a bit more realistic by creating a perspective view. So in order to create a perspective view, what we need to do is navigate to one of the floor plans. So I'm just going to head here over here to the project browser, scroll up a little bit and then select the level one. Now, once I have opened up the level one, we have to place a camera. A camera is the only way of achieving a perspective view in Revit. Now you can find the camera here on the quick access toolbar just by expanding the drop menu next to the 3D view and selecting the camera. Now, once you select the camera, you will get this little camera icon, which I'm going to place sort of in the general direction where I want my view to be. Just make sure that you're uh, far enough away from the house. Now you click once here, you expand it, make sure to, to encompass the whole house with these external lines. And then I'm just going to click once again, once I've gotten far past beyond house. Click here again, and there we go. Now we have a perspective view of our building. Now at this point, you can just go here to the properties panel, scroll down a little bit, and again, under extents, we have the option for a section box, which is just what I'm going to check. And again, we can here select it and move it down a little bit to maybe grab 
top of the building and now it's just a matter of orbiting around now if i just orbit around uh, like this uh, now in some cases you will not be happy with the way that this looks uh, you can fix the view a little bit now my uh, favorite way of changing the orientation of the camera is by using this full navigation wheel so you just click here on the full navigation wheel you move it all the way to the center and you click here in this quadrant where it says look and then you can kind of set up the direction in which the camera is looking now once you're happy with that you can just move your cursor here to the escape button click and you're done now for creating a section is it's basically the same process we just need to select the section box move this up a little bit uh, until we're no longer cutting the house go off here to the side and move the control in and there we go now again we have to reorient our camera a little bit and once we're happy with the view, we can just leave it like that. Or again, we can use the navigation wheel in order to uh, reorient ourselves in this view. Now, in order to create a head-on section view or a floor plan view, we have to take a bit of a different approach. So what I'm going to be doing now is just heading over here to the project browser, right-clicking on this existing view and just clicking delete. Now, in order to create a section view that's going to be head-on, what we need to do is go here to the floor plan. And then once we're in the floor plan, let's navigate here to the quick access toolbar, go to the default 3D view and open up the drop menu. And here, let's select the camera. Now for the camera, you want to place it somewhere over here uh, from which side you're going to be cutting the model. In this case, the, the section is here. So I'm just going to come over here close to this uh, little elevation symbol click over there and then move my section. Now what you want to try is to keep your uh, this line, the center line, as horizontal as possible. And just make sure to go past the model and then you can just click again. Now once we have created that view, it looks something like this. Now don't worry, we're going to be fixing it up. So again, while we're in this view, let's go to the properties panel, scroll down to extents and yeah, we just have to check on the section box. So once we have done that, because in this case, we can't really move the section box in the 3D view because we can't really see anything, we can just select it and then move to a more appropriate view. Now in this case, that is a floor plan view. So you can just go here to the project browser, double click on the floor plan view, and now we can play around with our section box. So just make sure to move it here and again align it with your existing section or wherever you want to place that section and then go back to the project browser find that new 3d view and open it up now in this case it's not going to be uh, kind of grabbing or encompassing the whole section don't worry you can just select this outline and then you can basically move it a little bit to the outside and there we go now one really important thing here uh, the position of the camera in space or the height of the camera is going to be sort of at an eye level. You can see that from this particular floor here because we can see the bottom of that floor. Now in floor in sections such as this, what I like to do is to have sort of a view where I'm uh, where the eye level is sort of centered with this here uh, with this here level or this here floor. Now you can achieve that. So in order to do something like that, what you need to do is you need to move here to the properties panel, but uh, here in the properties panel, you have to scroll all the way down until you find camera options. Now for camera options here, you will see that we have the eye elevation and the target elevation. So you remember when we were placing a camera, the first point where we clicked, that was the eye elevation. Now the second point where we clicked, that was the target. So the first point is I, the second is target, and that determines the height of your camera. So if I just move this to the height of the floor, in this case, that's going to be 300 centimeters. Click here, move this as well, and hit apply. The camera is going to move up, and now we can no longer see the top or the bottom of this floor. We're cutting right through it, or we're looking straight ahead. Okay, so at this point, you can maybe turn on shadows to make it look a bit more interesting. Now, when it comes to depth of this particular section, the position of the camera is really going to determine that. So for example, in order to reset that or change it, what you can do is you can just select this outline outside of our model, then scroll up and let's go to the floor plan. And then here we can move this either further away 
or closer in. So for example, if I move it closer in just like this and then open up that 3D view. So let's go back here to the project browser, open up the 3D view. Now, as you can see here, uh, it's sort of shrinked, but don't worry because we're closer in, we have to expand the, uh, the, the field of view. So once we expand that, as you can see, there will be a lot more depth to this image. Now, uh, by changing the position of the camera back, there will be less depth, as you can see here uh, on these two images. So you can move the camera either closer or further away in order to add more or less depth to your model. But keep in mind that uh, when you do that, you will have to resize uh, this outline. Now, one more thing, if you want to sort of take a screenshot or something like that, you can hide this outline uh, by going here to your extents and then just uh, turning off the crop region visible checkbox. There we go. So it's no longer visible. But for the section box, what you have to do is hide it. So you can hide the section box just by selecting it, going here to the modify tab, on the view panel, we have the hide in view option. So just open up the drop menu and click on hide element. Now, whenever you want to reset that, you have to go back here to reveal hidden elements. There we go. Select that section box and just uh, here go to unhide element or use the EU shortcut and just cancel out of this view mode. Now for creating the 3D floor plan, the approach is just a little bit different. So when we go to place a camera here in the floor plan view, I'm just going to go here to the quick access toolbar, open up the drop menu and select the camera. Now for the camera placement, you don't really have to place it in any particular place. So I'm just going to click anywhere here in the center, uh, maybe move it out in one general direction, click once again, and that will open up that camera view. Now at this point, once we have this view, we have to orient it to our floor plan. Now in order to do something like that, what you need to do is just uh, go to this 3D box here in the upper right corner, right click on that, and here we have the orient to view option. So you just go to floor plans because we want to create a 3D floor plan, and let's create a uh, level one floor plan. So once you click that, it will create something that looks like this. Now, uh, before uh, we proceed, what we do need to do is just go here to the properties panel, scroll a little bit down, and when, then we have this far clip active option. So this basically limits how far uh, your camera will see. In this case, the camera isn't seeing far enough, so it isn't viewing the building. So if we just uncheck that and then hit apply, now here your view will appear. Now what we're going to be doing is just messing uh, a little bit with the settings. So let's scroll down a little bit. And then here for the target elevation, I'm going to change it and just make it minus maybe 1000 centimeters. Apply. Now that will also or uh, rotate the view. Now this will happen sometimes. Don't worry. It's okay. And then also uh, this might be a bit too high. Uh, for a placement, so we don't really see uh, that uh, much depth. So what we need to do here is go to eye elevation and then change that to something a bit lower. Let's try 2500. Hit apply. There we go. Looks much better. We have a bit more depth. Now, of course, by adding shadows, it will look even better. Now, one thing that you will notice is that shadows look a little weird over here. And problem is we can't really see the floor here. So if I go to level one, here we have this floor below the garage, but we cannot see that here in this 3D view. The reason for that is this uh, 3D section box will stop below the view. So what we need to do is just select that section box to go to one of the either sections or elevations. In this case, I'm just going to go to south elevation. And then you want to expand that section box so it includes this floor over here. Also, I'm just going to drop it a little bit so it includes the garage door, so it cuts through the garage door. Okay, so I'm really happy with this, so let's go back here to our 3D view, and this is what we get. So as you can see, now we have that floor, and the shadows look much better. So there we go. That's how we can create all of these uh, camera views. Now, of course, we can just uh, play around a little bit with the settings for the view crop and then uh, later on we can hide that if necessary as well. Hey okay, guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. Now, if you don't want to miss any of my other tutorials I upload frequently, just make sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell icon. 
Uh, also, if you're interested in some advanced Revit courses, if you want to learn Revit, or if you're interested in just complete beginner, intermediate, or advanced courses, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. There I have numerous courses on Revit and the Autodesk Revit beginner to intermediate level course uh, covers pretty much everything that you need to get started with Revit. Uh, we start off by covering just the basic topics uh, about building information modeling and the whole introduction to Revit. It includes uh, four uh, projects uh, of varying complexity, but you will pretty much learn how to complete the project, the whole workflow, and how to produce all of the necessary uh, building documentation. And finally, we have a whole uh, segment on uh, each independent tool and feature in Revit. So whenever you start working on your own projects and get stuck anywhere, you can come back to this course and just check it out. Uh, so it's 16 hours of content and it's pretty much everything that you need to know for Revit. So check it out.